Joining us now is the man himself, the Burmese Python, Ong Lang Sang, right back on track with a sensational victory over Leandro Titus. Ong, my man, how are you feeling right now? Oh, great. You know, I um, had to dig deep for this one. Uh, a lot of things didn't go my way, but, you know, that's life. You know, you got to face adversity and come out on top. Our first question now will go to Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Congratulations on the win tonight. Fantastic knockout. Just talk to us, first of all, of how, about how cathartic that was after, you know, two obviously emotional losses for you to come back in such a big way. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's always a lot riding, you know, when I fight. Um, because I don't just fight for myself now. I fight for, like, my family and, you know, my, uh, my, my people back home. And it's, it's been a rough year for all of us. And um, it's been an emotional one. Uh, during training camp, you know, I've had, uh, I've had days when I would break down because of what's going on in my country. But like I said, you know, adversity is what makes you better. Uh, pressure is what makes diamonds. And uh, tonight I was able to, uh, you know, reap what I sow. Uh, I put in a lot for this camp. You know, I train with great, great training partners and great trainers. Um, and to improve as a mixed martial artist to put on a great show for the fans. And after the fight, I believe he told Chatri, uh, bring on anyone. And obviously there's a few names out there, the potential rematches with Vitaly Big Dash, with Rainer Ritter. Uh, when it comes to those two in particular, does one mean more to you than the other? Uh, no, I, I was actually, uh, you, you know, when I was a champion, uh, Abbasov called me out too. And I know Yoshi Okami wants a shot at me too. You know, all these people can talk, but you got to back up your talking, you know, like on, on social media too, people talk a lot, but let's, let's do it. Let's make these fight happen. You know, I, I'm, uh, I'm down for anyone and, uh, and, and anybody that deserves it. Um, again, like for me right now, it's to become a better version of myself and to put on exciting shows for the fans. Um, and, and uh, like, honestly, like, Rainier isn't an exciting fight for me. But, but uh, if the title shot is there for me, I'll take it in a heartbeat. And the finish tonight was definitely exciting. Of course, Leandro did take you down earlier in the fight. Uh, what was going through your head at that moment? Listen, I have great training partners, you know, uh, very similar built like uh, Leandro. You know, Phil Haas is one of them. Ian Heinrich is one of them. Um, Impa, you know, Brendan Allen as well. Uh, these guys really helped me out for this camp uh, to stay calm, composed and to stay relaxed. And, 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 and even when I'm on the bottom, do some damage from the bottom. You know, that's what I, I worked on. And then finally get myself up when, when the time, when the opportunity is there. And last one for me, coming off this big win, uh, obviously you uh, have the potential for a big fight coming forward. Uh, have you thought about a time frame? How soon would you like to get back in? September. I want September fight. This next question is from Fight Game Asia. Um, what was your game plan? And did, did anything in the fight surprise you? I put the pressure on him early. That, that was the game plan. Put the pressure on him, him early. Uh, make him shoot, make him tired. Uh, when, when he does take me down, just get back up, stay composed and get him tired and, and, uh, and just put the pressure on him, put my hands on him, um, mix things up, you know, kicks, body shots, everything, you know, and, and be just, be just composed. I, I know how good I, I train, you know, I, I know how well I do in the gym with, with, uh, with top tier athletes, you know, at Sanford MMA. So it, it gives me that, the, the sense of that, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, like I put in the work, man. I, I should be able to, you know, reap my reward. But sometimes you don't. In life, that, that's how it is. Um, but tonight I was able to. Um, but, but preparation is what, what, uh, what made me not freak out or, you know, uh, worry about the takedown. This is a follow-up question from Fight Game Asia. You mentioned Abasov challenged you. And how do you think, how do you, think you match up against Abasov? As a mixed martial artist, I, I try to get better at everything, you know. I want to be like, listen, I've never ever in my life said I'm the best fighter in the world, but I, I say I could be a match. Uh, I could be a bad matchup for anybody. You know, I could be a bad matchup for Abbasov. I could be a bad matchup for anybody. Um, I have the skill set and I have the team to make me dangerous against anybody. Uh, so let, let's make it happen. You know, Abbasov said, you know, I'm waiting for you. 
I've hear, I've heard it over and over again on, on social media. You know, if, if that's the case, let's do it. Um, Abbasov is so talented. You know, he, he's a champion for a reason. And it, it would be good for us to, you know, test each other out too. But I, I'm not calling him out. I'm just, I'm just replying to his call outs. You know, I'm just replying to people's call outs. Yoshi Okami called me out too. I, I know somewhere online <laughs> he called me out too. So uh, all these people that call me out, let's go. Let's make it happen. You can fight all the trolls. All the trolls. This next question on goes to Raj Shakar of Essentially Sports. Raj, floor is yours. And you really had a first round big knockout against Leandro. Do you feel that the, he could have have any advantage if the fight would have surpassed the first round? Or do you feel that you could have equally dominated him in the latest stage of the fight? It's a three round fight, man. I haven't fought a three round fight since 2017. Every fight I fought is a five round fight. It, it doesn't matter. Three rounds is nothing to me. I can do it in two months again, you know, in, in a month from now. You know, let's go. Let's keep me active. Obviously, you have been one of the most active fighters in the roster. And right now, you really can have a great trilogy with Vitaly Big Dash. And the scorecard is at 1-1 right now. And the fight got canceled. The trilogy got canceled multiple times. What's your reaction on that? I don't know. It's not up to me. You know, I've, I've never, like, every single fight that one championship has prevented, presented me, I've signed within an hour. So it's not in my hands, you know, it's uh, like, I, I don't say I'm the best fighter in the world. Like I don't, I don't ever say that, but I'm down for a scrap. And I'm, I'm down for, uh, for, for putting on exciting matchups. Um, and, and I got, and I know I got one of the best teams in the world and, and we're working hard to be, you know, better every day. So um, whoever it is, let's, uh, let's put on some shows. Uh, Let's go. Next question here will go to Jack Gottsell of Topsoft Sports. I just want to mention that we do live watch parties for every single combat sports event, multiple a weekend. I've never seen so many people come into a live stream to watch one specific fighter. We had over 5,000 people that were just there to see you. What does it mean to have that support from your, your home country? You know, like, I'm not a politician. I'm not like a political figure. I'm, I'm nobody. You know, I'm just a dad. I'm just a husband and I'm just a, I'm just a mixed martial artist, you know, to, to be able to, uh, to be able to get fans and viewers and friends uh, watching and supporting me means a lot, you know, and, and I cannot like during these hard times, I cannot reciprocate what they've done for me. And, 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 and because of that, I apologize. Um, but, but it means, it means a lot to me, you know, and, and uh, and I hope during these hard times, it gives them some sort of happiness. Awesome. And I just want to say, we talked before the fight, and he said he was going to come out there and strike with you. He shot for that takedown, but you were able to get up, and the fight went exactly how you said. And then you were able to get that knockout that you said you were going to get. What did it mean for you to be able to finish him in the very first round and, and really prove your point? Like, I, I train with a, a lot of great, you know, uh, training partners, a lot of great fighters. Um and, and I know where I stand, you know, and I know where I stand and I know I can take your shots. Um, so, so when he inter on his interview, you know, he said he was going to stand with me. Like I didn't, I, I knew he was going to, at one point going to shoot, you know, cause, cause I know, I know he's been working with Rainier as well. So um, I, I knew he was going to shoot at, at one point, but, but, but remember he's not built like Rainier, you know, his built is a little bit different. And, and I work for, we have a lot of guys in our gym that are built like him. So I didn't have as much problem, and and and, uh, and and between fights, I try to get better. I try to be a better version of myself, and and so like I was able to negate his wrestling and his cage control, um, and, and impose my, my striking. You know, our next question goes to Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. I'm just curious because you had mentioned September a bit earlier. It's the next time you want to get into the one circle, and you know the anniversary cards going on that month like how important would it be to get on a card like that because you know you're just so accomplished in one championship i imagine being on their decade anniversary card would be big yeah i, I didn't take any damage you know um and i spar hard every week so i don't i don't feel like these fights are a lot harder than you know sparring with the top fighters in the world uh, at, at sanford so you know um if i'm healthy put me on that uh that anniversary you know the, the, the 10 year anniversary uh, i'm down for it you know uh, and and let's uh, keep getting better and and keep putting on great shows for the fan um of course there's skill sets that i have to improve and positions that i have to improve and get better 
Um, and, and I'll work on that, you know, as soon as I get back, I didn't take any damage. So I'll be back in the gym, you know, next week. Um, and I'll be down for September. So I find it to be a curious confluence where there's a lot of people talking about how you're this like huge star and a national hero, but also you're just a very humble guy. And you seem to always reiterate like, Hey, I'm you know, just an average person. I'm a loving father. Like, is it ever, I guess, a quandary for you, like an internal conflict being seen as this, like larger than life hero when in reality, you're just a loving dad, a human being? I don't see myself as, you know, I just see myself as a regular person. I just, uh, every time I go home and I have to change my baby's diaper, you know, I'm just, I'm just a dad um, trying to make a better life for my family, you know, so I don't see myself as anybody special. Fair enough. And just lastly, if I could, because, you know, one championship, there was combatsportslaw.com look at, looking into if the global rule set could go down in America and Colorado actually had approved the one championship rule set with knees to a down opponent, et cetera. I'm kind of curious, like what would your interest level be like with a one championship show in America and just competing on that? Yeah, I, I would love that. You know, fighting maybe one time without jet lag would be nice. Our next question will go to Kyle Siegel of going live podcast. You mentioned September um, is your ideal goal. If you win in September, I mean, what's your, I guess, vision look like, you know, for 2022, how many fights do you think you need till you get that title shot back? Um, as, as many as one championship wants me to, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, like it doesn't really matter. Let, let's, let's do two more fights this year if possible, you know, in the next, I mean, in the next five months, we can do two more fights for sure. I mean, I can, I, I physically can. So if, if one championship can keep me busy and I think they're going to, you know, I talked to, uh, I talked to uh, Chatri before I, I left, you know, the cage side and I said, keep putting me in. And he said, for sure. So hopefully two more times before the end of the year. Yeah, we would love to see you. And would you prefer fights at middleweight, like heavyweight or like a combination? I think I'll stay at middleweight because uh, uh, I move a little bit better at middleweight. Uh, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little more like a tank at light heavyweight. So I think middleweight will be better for me. Yeah.